If you have shown any interest in aviation avoidance, you certainly have heard about avoidance directives or EDs. Um, they are being looked at as the holy grail of aviation requirements. They're being issued by authorities all over the world. In this video, I would like to give you a short walkthrough of how an EASA ID is structured, what information you can find in it, and basically how to evaluate it, how to verify what it what is applicable to an aircraft you are currently looking at. Welcome to episode four of Airline Basics TV. Right, welcome everyone. My name is Michael Svoboda from Airline Basics Com, and this is episode four of Airline Basics TV. Today we will be dealing with awareness directives, known typically as ADs. Before we get started, I would like to kindly ask you to subscribe to my channel, to give me a thumbs up under this video if you like it and if you find it useful, um, and to leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. Let me know what I can improve on. Without any further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so we're now here on the IASA website. Uh, you can see uh, the address here. It's ad.iasa.europa.eu. Uh, if you enter this address into your browser, you will get a full list uh, of all ADs issued or adapted by IASA. So this table is pretty straightforward. On the left column here, we see the AD number, the issuing authority, we have the issue date, we have the subject, of course, the approval holder and type designation with the effective date and the attachment, uh, typically in a PDF, where you can actually download the AD. So let's scroll through here. I've already looked at the most current ADs. These are the ones issued uh, recently. We have two ADs here, which I would like to quickly go through. Um, they both happen to be for the Airbus A330 and A340. Um, but the reason I've chosen those two is because they present a slightly different level of uh, complexity. Mm, the first one is a little bit more simple. The second one is slightly more complex. So let's get into it. The, the first that you can look at here is 2020-0077. 4330 and 340. We can click here on that uh, PDF icon to download it and save it and open it. Okay, so here it is. We have the AD. Uh, let me try and make this bigger for you. The beginning is pretty simple. Um, we have the ASA, which is uh, which is the issuing authority, awareness directive. There's the AD number issued. There's the date of issue of the AD, 31st of March. Uh, 2020, we can see today is the uh, 4th of April 2020, so it's been issued four days ago. Uh, we will skip the notes. We have the design approval holder's name, which is Airbus, the type to which it applies, and then we have the effective date. And as you can see, the effective date, that's an important date, it's 14th of April 2020, and it's not the same as the issue date. Uh, that's an important thing to keep in mind. Most of the requirements are being calculated from the effective date and not from the issue date. Furthermore, we have the type certificate design um, sheet number, which will be reflecting those aircraft here. Foreign AD is not applicable. Um, what that means is that AD has been originally issued by IASA. Supersedure none. That means that this AD is not superseding any previous AD. Next, we have the subject, the ATA chapter 27, five controls. Stop rudder input warning device installation activation. The subject is very simple, but it gives you, just by looking at it, it gives you a brief idea of what the AD is all about. And now we continue with the AD. The manufacturer of the aircraft is Airbus. And here is the applicability. That's a very specific applicability that tells you exactly to which aircraft this AD is applicable. It tells you the actual MSN uh, manufacturer serial numbers to which the AD is applicable. All manufacturer serial numbers, MSNs, except those that have embodied modification 49144. So the first step you would do when analyzing this AD is whether your aircraft has modification 49144. Uh, the next section of an AD are definitions. Uh, the definitions will include anything uh, which is being used in, in the further text of the AD. Uh, in this case, actually very simple. It just says DSV. So wherever in the, in the following text you need those two words, DSV, then this refers to one of those two SVs, either the A330 SV or the A340 SV. The next section of each AD would be the reason. Uh, we, we will skip the reason. Um, basically, the reason tells you why the AD was issued. And now we come to the actual gist of the AD, which are the required actions and compliance times. This part tells you 
what you actually need to do with your aircraft. And in case of this AD, you will always find the sentence required as indicated unless accomplished previously. So if you did any of this before, you don't need to do it again. Uh, but let's assume you didn't do it. First part, modification, replacement, activation. So within 48 months after the effective date of this AD, that's exactly what I said at the beginning, you need to remember the effective date because this calculation, those 48 months, starts to get calculated from the effective date of this AD. And the effective date, just to uh, recall, was 14th of April 2020, which is actually 10 days from today. I'm recording this on the 4th of April, so the effective date will be 10 days from, from now, and then 48 months from 10 days from now, uh, you need to accomplish this action. The action is modify or replace each FCDC, which is the flight control primary computer, by installing this software standard here, or a later approved standard, and activate uh, the uh, what's called the stop rudder input oral warning device, SRIW, very complex acronym. And the concurrent requirements prior to or concurrent with the modification of an airplane as required by paragraph run one, so as required by this part here. Install the FCPC and flight warning computer standards as specified in Table 1 in accordance with the SB listed in Table 1. So it's a concurrent requirement, which means that you need to do this modification, but concurrently, which means at the same time, you need to do those SVs. And then the last part is the part installation prohibition. It's also very common for, for many ADs. Basically what it tells you is that once you modify your part to a new part, you are not allowed to install the old one again. The next section will be the reference publications. Here, here you will just get the list of all the SVs which have been referenced throughout the AD. This can be actually quite helpful sometimes when the AD is very complex. Uh, you can just go quickly through those SVs and verify their applicability to your aircraft. And the next section is remarks, uh, which I think we can skip as well. So like I say, this ID was a pretty simple one. The requirement was actually very straightforward. Within 48 months, so within uh, four years from the effective date, you need to update this software standard. And when you do it at the same time, you need to perform those two mods as well. Let's open a second one. It's AD 2020-0076. So it starts the same. We have the AD number here, issue date, model, the effective date, 13th of April 2020. So again, it's 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 nine days from now. It, it's, it's a future date. Here we talked about the supersedure in the previous AD. Um, this AD actually supersedes a previous one. It supersedes AD 2019-0164. Again, the title, ADA 32 is landing gear. Freefall actuators inspection replacement. The applicability, it's applicable to all MSNs. So every 330, every Airbus A330 from those variants uh, is affected by this AD. And the same for the A340, all MSNs. And now the definitions you can see, we have a few more than before. The AOT, the AOT is an Airbus alert operator's transmission and it gives you a number here at revision three. Uh, the next definition is the affected FFA. The FFA is the freefall actuator. So whenever the AD talks about an affected FFA, it actually talks about the freefall actuator having this part number here and having a serial number is listed in appendix three, four or five of the AOT. This part is pretty important as well. Identification whether or not an affected FAA is installed on an airplane can be accomplished either by physical part number and serial number inspection or a records check, provided those records can be relied upon for that purpose. So you can do one, one of two things. You can ask your MRO to send a mechanic to the aircraft and physically verify the part number and serial number of each freefall actuator. Or you can just verify the aircraft records. And that's important knowledge because if you're working for a camel, for example, instead of spending money on performing the visual check, you can just verify your records, assuming they're accurate, but they should be if you're working for a camel, and verify based on your records only whether this AD is applicable to your aircraft or not. And the last definition here, a serviceable FAA is one which is not affected. And here we go to another definition, which is groups. That happens quite often in several ADs, uh, where aircraft are divided into groups based on something. That something is explained here in, the, in this definition. And again, you need to make sure you know which group contains your aircraft. So we have two groups here, and that's again a fairly 
easy the old or more, more complex than the previous one group one airplanes are those that have an affected faa installed and group two airplanes are those that do not have an affected faa installed the reason we will skip like we did before and now we have the required actions and compliance times unless accomplished previously firstly identification and inspection for group one airplanes and we can go back group one are those that have an affected FAA installed. If you have an affected FFA installed, you need to do this. And this says within the compliance times, as specified in table one, we will go down to table one in a minute, and thereafter at intervals not to exceed the values defined in table two of this AD, accomplish a test of the freefall system of each landing gear fitted with an affected FFA as defined in this AD in accordance with the instructions of the AOT. So one sentence, a long sentence, a lot of information, a lot of requirements. You need to check the tables, table one, table two, when to perform the first inspection, and then how often to perform the inspection again. It talks about intervals, that means that the, the inspection is not a one-time inspection, it's a repetitive inspection, which means it needs to be done periodically. Furthermore, you need to do the inspection in accordance with the procedure that is written inside the AOT. And it says here, if an airplane is equipped with affected FFA from different appendices, that means the appendices from the AOT, the interval applicable for each affected FAA as specified in table 2 of this AD can be used, or the applicable lowest interval can be used. So I expect there to be different intervals from FFAs coming from different appendices, and if you have two of them and they have different intervals, you don't need to stop your aircraft separately for one and separately for the other. You can actually um, choose the lower one and go with the lower one. So here we have a table one, and table one is the compliance time uh, at which you need to do the first inspection. So here, if you have an affected FFA in Appendix 3 of the AOT, which was not tested per the original issue, you need to perform the first inspection within 90 days. If it has been tested, you need to perform the inspection within 1600 hours or five months since previous test. And if your FFA is in Appendix 4 or 5 of the AOT, then you need to do it within 90 days after 25th of July 2019. So this table determines when you need to do the first inspection on your FFAs. And then table 2 will give you the intervals at which you need to repeat the inspection. And those intervals depend on which appendix includes your FFA. And depending on which appendix it is, you do the inspection either every 16 hours or five months or 2,500 hours or eight months. Now there are corrective actions. I mean, it seems pretty straightforward. You do an inspection because you expect to find a fault. So if you do find a fault, what should you do? Well, this paragraph will tell you. If during any test, as required by paragraph 1, so the, the upper one, an affected FFA fails the test, before next flight, replace the affected FFA with a serv serviceable one. If the FFA fails the test, you need to replace it immediately. You cannot fly with it. Next paragraph, test compliance. Accomplishment of a test as required by paragraph 1, so again, the, the original test, on an airplane allows an operator to claim compliance with the applicable part. So basically what this means is that there are operational checks mentioned in the maintenance program of the aircraft and if you perform the inspection per the AOT you satisfy the MPD requirement. Going further there's credit. Credit basically means that you can sometimes skip the first inspection if you have done certain maintenance actions based on some other document before. In which case test of the freefall system of a landing gear fitted with an affected FAA on an airplane and corrective actions accomplished before the effective date of this AD in accordance with the instructions of this AOT, but at revision one or two. Remember here we talk about revision three. So if you've done it in accordance with previous revision, they are acceptable to comply with the initial requirements of that AD. So if you just happen to have done the inspection at, at revision one or two of the AOT, that's okay, then you don't need to do the original inspection again, but you will need to keep the intervals, of course, and do the repeat inspections in accordance with revision 3. Next section is replacement. Unless already accomplished as required by paragraph 2, let's go back what paragraph 2 was. Well, paragraph 2 was the paragraph that said that if 
and FFA fails the test, you need to replace it. So unless you have replaced it because it failed, there is a certain compliance time within you need to replace it anyway. So eventually you keep on doing the inspections, but eventually you need to replace each affected FAA installed on an airplane with a serviceable FAA. And the time you have to do that, again, based on an appendix, is either 22 months or 46 months after the effective date of this AD. So you do the initial inspection, then you repeat the inspection at certain intervals as they were shown in table two, but eventually within 22 months or within 20, 46 months, you need to replace it anyway. So the, the repeat inspection doesn't go on forever. But there are other ADs out there for which terminating actions can be optional, in which case you can continue with the repeat inspection over and over and over again for the entire lifetime of the aircraft, or you can do a terminating action and the need to perform the cyclic inspection will be gone. So here the terminating action is pretty straightforward. Replacement of an airplane on an airplane of each affected FAA with a serviceable one constitutes terminating action for the repetitive tests of the freefall system of each landing gear. Okay guys, that's it. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please give me a thumbs up, please subscribe to my channel and please comment down below about whatever you'd like to tell me who gets the video, to ADs or just life in general. I'd like to hear from you. Please visit my LinkedIn profile as well. Let's get in touch and I'll see you in the next one.